Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and today we're going to be continuing our Doctrine series, looking at the various doctrines and organisations and structures that I use in the Battle Space episodes of the Dominion War, and so that you guys can understand what is going on on screen and how that overall organisation and operational structure functions for each of the fleets. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the Klingon, their doctrine, organisation, and their formations. First we need to look at the basic underpinning ideas of Klingon doctrine. Klingon doctrine obviously puts heavy emphasis on offensive action, taking the initiative and going and confronting the enemy and shattering them as quickly as possible. It is maneuver warfare. And gentlemen, maneuver warfare is Klingon warfare of the 24th century. It is all about the violence of action. All about speed, shock, and surprise. Now, this results in a lead-from-the-front mentality. Uh, Klingon doctrine really favours junior commanders taking the initiative, getting into the thick of it, and really, you know, taking the opportunities that present themselves. It's always about going forward and taking that initiative, taking the risk and being aggressive and relentless. Just keep going forward. Keep pressing the enemy. Junior officers are really given a lot of latitude in terms of how they operate uh, because the goal is really to sustain forward movement and aggression. Just overwhelm the enemy as quickly as possible. Now, senior commanders are really there to more keep track of the engagement you know, they'll be looking from a further back position and they're going to be really looking at, okay, where are we making success? Where are we uh, making no headway? And what they'll do is they'll direct those elements that are not making much progress and get them to follow behind those that are going forward. So all the time it's about really just funneling your forces through a gap, funneling through a gap and keeping the enemy overwhelmed and keeping this consistent forward motion all the time so really senior commanders are there to guide units together to keep a kind of cohesion uh to an attack as well as a momentum to the attack but other than that commanders are really encouraged to take opportunities as they present themselves critically though it's about communication if they're going to take an opportunity they need to let their seniors know what is going on so they can get a big picture understanding of what is really playing out. So it's almost a, a, a semi-irregular structure, but there are problems with it. Defensively, it is very weak. Uh, and if they get halted, they just have to fall back. There's not much else they can do. That's really the basic underpinning ideas of Klingon doctrine. Defensively, they kind of often fall into a almost guerrilla warfare kind of... Uh, which works, but is difficult to actually hold on to territory so in terms of organization that of course echoes this lead from the front mentality so the basic unit of a klingon fleet is a squadron this is three to five ships and will either be led by a senior captain uh, or on larger ships if it's like a vocha squadron it will be a major now squadrons are all composed of the same class and they are there to work together as a, as a cohesive unit and there to really support the other squadrons that will form the wing, which is the next unit up, and that is 10 ships. Now, a wing is generally about three squadrons put together, so some will be larger than others, and they will be mixed, much like a Cardassian line, of course, larger though, with 10. Uh, they are more mixed with primary and support units. So, for example, in a Vochar wing, uh, the Vochars, the four Vochar, are the primary element, and the six Borels are there as are there as a supporting element. And these are generally led by, if it's a Vochar wing, it will generally be led by a colonel. And if it's a uh, something a little lower down, like maybe a Borel wing, it will be a major. Now. This then brings us up to the primary manoeuvre unit of a Klingon fleet, which is a brigade. Now, this is 
30 ships, so that's three wings, and it's obviously under a brigadier, and it's a well-rounded independent unit. A brigade will generally have something like a Burrell wing, a Vochar wing, and then, say, a Katinga wing would be an example. That is a self-sufficient force. Go off on its own, maneuver pretty freely, and engage, you know, as it sees fit. It is capable of engaging a superior force and holding it off for some time while the other brigades will move into support. So it is the really the primary maneuver element of a whole Klingon fleet. Now that brings us up to the fleet, which is generally about four brigades. So that will be 120 ships, four brigades under the general. You might notice 120 ships. This is a large, that's a lot. Klingon fleets obviously partially allow this because they have a lot more cannon fodder ships like the Birds of Prey, but also because of the command structure, because it is much looser and freer, with more emphasis being placed on the initiative of the junior commanders, there's an ability there to have larger numbers since you're not asking the senior commander, be they the uh, colonels or the brigadiers, you're not asking them to take uh, detailed command. They're more there to just keep track of where the different brigades or wings are going and maintain the integrity of the attack. Now, that's not to say that someone like a brigadier or even the general won't intervene in an attack. They absolutely will. So one of the things they will do, a general particularly, if he sees one of his brigades is stalling, one of the brigades is success, obviously, reroute. Equally, if he sees that perhaps his forces are getting uh, drawn out and defeat each uh, element in detail, it's up to him to say, okay, no, you three to pick, you know, one engagement and say, okay, right, the rest of the brigades need to go here and support this attack because otherwise we're going to be defeated in detail. So like I say, it's about preserving the cohesion and momentum and aggression of the force in whatever means that requires whether that's uh bypassing the enemy altogether could mean bypassing the enemy it could mean breaking through the enemy and overwhelming or it could mean retreating potentially but that will generally often be a retreat with a look to counter-attack obviously but there's a need to preserve that momentum to a klingon fleet it shouldn't be standing still that brings us to the units that you will see in a klingon fleet now, there's not a huge actual variety in the different classes, but there's a lot of variety in application. A uh, very common thing you'll see, the first element of a Klingon fleet that will be encountered is a Burrell wing. That's 10 Burrells, quite a lot. Uh, it is the primary scouting and skirmish element and is really there to, you know, get a handle on the enemy force, see what they're dealing with. Potentially, they might stay to support the further attack or... They'll push forward and see what else is out there. Next is the Vochar Wing. This is the primary battle unit of a Klingon fleet. Centers around, you have four Vocha, uh, two regular gun Vocha, a, a torpedo Vocha, which carries a torpedo module on the front. It gives it the capability of a sort of a galaxy class torpedo launcher, so it can launch multiple independently targeted torpedoes in a volley at extreme ranges. It's very good at giving long-range supporting fire. And of course, you have the Command Watcher, which is not actually the command ship for that unit. More often, it's actually the command ship for the Brigade. The Brigade really does center around a Watcher group, generally. Not all Brigades, but most. Then another part of the Brigade is the Katinga Wing. This is really the mobile artillery unit. This is there to smash through a strong defense position. It's very good when deployed on the flanks and getting enfilading fire against enemy capital ships and force them onto the back foot and that can often free up the space needed for uh, things like the Vocha and Burrell to move. Then you have other units like the Heavy Group, which is really just a reserve firepower. So your attack is maybe slowing down or stalling, whatever that might be. You bring forward a Heavy Group, you've got torpedo vouchers and you've got and you've got katingas and they can smash through 
most fortifications, all but the heaviest, and certainly most uh, capital ship formations. And then finally, you have just a mixed group, which is two Vocha, Katingas, and then some Burrells. It's a very flexible unit, obviously, there to fill in as required. And that really summarizes the formations that are present within a Klingon fleet. As you can see, it's actually very simple. And that's partially, you know, and obviously there's an elegance to that simplicity. It's a very flexible force that is designed to be uh, very responsive and independent. Like I say, each brigade is expected to go off and do its own thing with only limited command by the general. The general is just there to give them a, a direction in which to go. Otherwise, he's just there to ensure that they maintain that cohesion, that aggression, and that violence of action. There are problems, like I say, and you can see that there are attempts to exploit it, but again, because of its simplicity, it can be adapted, particularly when led by experienced, capable commanders. So the Klingon fleet is really something of a is something of a playground for those who are particularly capable of offensives. It's a really it's a fleet doctrine that is that is based around the premise of maneuver warfare and of aggressive warfare. And in that way, it's very successful um, and is really stands out. It's really something to see a Klingon fleet in motion going on the attack and it's a very difficult thing to defend against thank you guys for watching i'd like to give a special thanks to my members especially the centurions heretical cabbage jeff hallam nathaniel mead david reeves captain's quarters gilmo martinez aaron fulton martin mcconville pendleberry p and bos domestic disputes thank you guys for your support uh and thank you guys for being an excellent community. See you all next time.